the Adams family. in 1906. That didn't stop me. Yeah, real Adam. <laughs> All the noise. Well, the convention's more tissue, the convention. Oh, I do wish they wouldn't shout so. It keeps little Pugsley's octopus awake. Poor thing's getting rings under his tentacles. <laughs> My African strangler, too. It just loses all desire to strangle anyone. <laughs> Thank you, Thing. <laughs> Dear Thing. It set such a good example for us. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> Fester. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, you know I don't like petty jealousies. Where's Gomez? He's down in the playroom hanging pictures. Oh, dear. I do hope he isn't hanging the picture of Cousin Grizzly facing the firing squad down there. <laughs> It looks so right in the hall. <laughs> what are you doing, darling? Just getting the playroom into the election spirit. Is he running again? No, but I thought I'd bring out the pictures of the men we Adamses have supported in the past. Very appropriate. <laughs> we really backed Landon to the hilt. Yes. I must say, he was a very good loser. <laughs> no better than Al Smith here. <laughs> or Wendell Wilkie. <laughs> or Adlai. Uncle Blight masterminded their campaigns. Old kiss of death Blight, they call him. <laughs> I never quite knew why. Grandpa Squint says it's an old family nickname. <laughs> Grandpa knew his way around the political arena, too. <laughs> Abe Lincoln begged him for his support. But... There's the man who got it, Stephen Douglas. <laughs> Darling, with all this natural political talent, shouldn't you be running for public office? No, we Adamses prefer to think of ourselves as kingmakers. <laughs> the man I've decided to throw my support to, in every way, is Leonard G. Quimby. <laughs> Well, I see you picked your man. Yes, I have. Even heard you made a substantial contribution to his campaign. It's only money. Good. <laughs> George Bass is my name. Adam's here. Is all this yours? Well, we go back to the cemetery. <laughs> we all do. Sometime. <laughs> it's nice to see citizens taking an interest in the election, even if they have backed the wrong man. Quimby? Why, he's our insurance man. Got us off the hook when my son Pugsley accidentally blew up the garage. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Uh, you're right. <laughs> my man promises to modernize the city. Put in more street lights. Drain the swamps. Drain the swamps? That and more. Well, maybe I have been a little hasty. Do you have a picture of your man? Do I have a picture of my man? <laughs> there he is. The voice of progress. That's Sam L. Hilliard. Well, he's an old friend. I hope the L stands for Lucifer. Uh, it does, it does. Good. He's a fine man. The last time he was around here, he went away with the shakes. I wonder why. Uh, overwork. And you'll vote for him? We'll do better than that. We'll go out and campaign for him. Wonderful. Wait till I tell Mr. Hilliard. Oh, dear. Welcome, fellow campaigners. <laughs> Sorry, Quimby. You can sprinkle later, Tish. Take a look at this. I could have sworn he was bald. My dear, that's another man. That's our old friend from the school board, Sam L. Hilliard. <laughs> <laughs> 
I've changed horses in midstream. That's the Adams way. Adams. The L stands for Lucifer. Very appropriate for a politician. But darling, look at his platform. Modernize the city, put in more street lights, drain the swamps, drain our lovely swamps. The man's an extremist. Querida Mia, our swamps are safe. Mr. Hilliard won't do any of those terrible things. Don't you realize politicians always make extravagant promises? Fortunately, I can see through their little games. Darling, you're so clever. I'm sure Mr. Hilliard will be very happy we've decided to join his campaign. I can just see his face. No, no, no. I want no part of that Adams family. <laughs> They're good for a nice campaign contribution. You get it. The public likes personal contact with the candidate. You know, the old handshake, the baby kissing. You've got to go over and welcome them officially. I'd rather lose. <laughs> you may, if you don't lay your hands on some more campaign funds. Seriously? Seriously. It's still not worth it. <laughs> Hilliard is nice. Vote for him twice. <laughs> Community pride, public service, civic duty. I wonder if we're doing the right thing. Don't you want to save our lovely swamps? Oh, well, that is a good cause. <laughs> Besides, elections are fun. We should vote more often. How's this one? Tippy Canoe and Hilliard, too. That's nice, Uncle Fester. And very original, too. Yours is nice, too, my dear. Thank you, darling. You left the R out of friend. I thought it looked better that way. By Jove, it does. I wonder why Mr. Hilliard hasn't called to thank us for joining his campaign. Busy, no doubt. That reminds me. I think I'll send Lurch over and invite Hilliard to a little strategy meeting. Ah, our candidate. <laughs> Welcome. Ah, Mr. Hilliard, how nice of you to join us. <laughs> We've been up nights just planning and planning for you. What are you planning? Show him the wonderful sign you painted for him. Everybody's fiend. <laughs> I didn't think you'd notice. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Hilliard. I'll have Lurch serve some refreshments. You rang. Name it, Mr. Hilliard. Coffee? Tea? Brew? Oh, no, thank you. Won't you sit down, Mr. Hilliard? <laughs> Mrs. Adams and I would like to discuss some campaign strategy with you. Look, I just remembered a speaking engagement. <laughs> Yes, thank you. <laughs> now then, what's the key to every successful political campaign? Money? <laughs> exactly. Gomez is such a brilliant strategist. She really knows me. Sure, sure. Well, why don't you just make out a check for, say, uh, 5,000? <laughs> a drop in the bucket. 10? 20 or nothing. 20? We insist. Well, if you put it that way... We do, but more important than money is how it's going to be spent. We have some wonderful ideas. Uh, like that sign? Better. <laughs> no, well, why don't you just make out a check and leave the campaigning to us? Ah, uh, but these are surefire strategies. Number one, we want to get our butler lurch on television. <laughs> we feel he'll appeal to the women's vote. <laughs> Camera moves in. It's a close-up of Lurch. Lurch expresses himself on the candidacy of Sam L. Hilliard. <laughs> Animal magnetism, you can't top that. I'll tell you what, uh, make it 10,000. Our children can appeal to the junior voters. Junior voters? Kids don't vote. Why, George, you're right. Uh, how about 5,000? 
<laughs> Miss Darling, we'll still have to let the children go on television. They'll be so disappointed. Besides, they wrote such brilliant speeches. Twenty-five hundred. You'll forget all about money when you hear the song that Uncle Fester wrote for you. A campaign song. A thousand. Uncle Fester! <laughs> Uncle Fester, sing your campaign song for Mr. Hilliard. Oh, this will kill you. Oh, no. <laughs> To the harpsichord, Lurch, we're going to do the song. <laughs> it's the kind of song that gets you. Right here. <laughs> Five hundred. <laughs> Don't be a hog, help clean up the bog. Vote for Samuel Hilliard. He'll stick to the issue. He may even kiss you. So vote for Samuel Hilliard. <laughs> Honest and fearless. Samuel is peerless. He's a man for a home waste dump. So don't be a goat and just catch your vote for the pride of our city. <laughs> well? What do you think? I think we've got more money than we need. <laughs> Uncle Fester can do the song with special effects, too. He lights up. Lights up. <laughs> Don't worry about the flickering. We'll have him recharged. <laughs> I'd better go. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. Please, I'll give you a little money. Oh, nonsense. I'm really unworthy of your support. Twaddle. I'm a grafter. You mean all your campaign promises are phony? That's a three-dollar bill. I got a lot of three-dollar bills. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything about the street lights. Uh-huh. The streets stay dark and gloomy. Wonderful. <laughs> and the bogs and marshes, I'm going to make them even boggier. Capital! <laughs> I knew you'd appreciate my leveling with you. We do, we do, Mr. Henry. Oh, I almost forgot the most important thing, our party mascot. We don't need a party. Oh, <laughs> yes, we do. The Democrats have their donkey, the Republicans have their elephant. Guess what we have? I couldn't begin to. We have Kitty Cat. Kitty! Here, Kitty, 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 Kitty! <laughs> <laughs> Frighten the poor dear. I'll send you a letter of apology first thing in the morning. You forgot your hat. Keep it! <laughs> well, it looks like we backed the right man. No question about it. I'm just sorry about one thing. What's that, dear? I forgot to register. <laughs> of human events, there are many moments that try men's souls. <laughs> there are moments of crisis, of tragedy, of turmoil, doubt. There are even moments... <laughs> I put Kitty to sleep. Oh, what does it matter, darling? He doesn't vote anyway. No, no, it's my speech. Well, let's go through it. Start at the beginning. My friends. Hold it. That'll never go, dear. Get right to the issues. You're right. <laughs> One of the major issues of the day is peace. Well, that's true, dear. But everybody wants peace, even Mr. Quimby. You're right. <laughs> and now to the matter of taxes. Shall we have high taxes or shall we have low taxes? Isn't that a dangerous position? You're right. <laughs> Which brings us to the question of education. No, nope. much too controversial. You're right. <laughs> also, the question of social welfare. <laughs> now we come to the biggest, the most burning issue of the day. The question of... of... Can you make that up? question of swamps. Oh, yes. As to the matter of swamps... Darling, the less said about that, 
the better. Very clever, Carita. Very clever. <laughs> I thank you. Well... I know what you're going to say. After such an enlightening and courageous speech, I shouldn't thank them. They should thank me. I agree completely. <laughs> to do? Lurch, you hit the swanky Oak Knoll section. Roger. <laughs> Mama? Oh, I get off in the business district. You parade up and down the street with your placard, and you blow your bugle. <laughs> Uncle Fester, is your assignment clear? I sing, light up, and pass out $3 bills. <laughs> Remember, the secret word is dignity. <laughs> All right, Lurch. Blast off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they make a fine-looking group? Mr. Hilliard is as good as elected. <laughs> Oak Knowles is in the bag, huh? Great. Keep in touch. Well, everything looks good so far. Pull Sayer or shoe in. I wouldn't be if I hadn't gotten rid of that Adams family. Oh, please, let's not mention them again. You're right. I'll hop on down the poles and keep an eye on things. Right. If anything goes wrong, call me. Right. Get over here to the fourth ward. The Adamses are loose. <laughs> As I told you before, ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking to you from the busy intersection of Broadway and Maine. Well, I've seen election campaigns, but this one beats them all. Looks like we've done it. Our on-the-spot broadcast today features... Wait a minute. There's candidate Sam Hilliard, and he's chasing a campaign worker down the street with a stick. Isn't that Uncle Fester? Uncle Fester? Yes, he just lit up. <laughs> I'd better return you to our studios, KBHL. I'm beginning to see things. Thank you, Mel. And there you see... Why would Mr. Hilliard chase Uncle Fester with a stick? Nonsense, dear. Didn't you hear the reporter admit he was seeing things? <laughs> oh, of course. Hilliard will probably be along any minute to express his gratitude. <laughs> Boss, you can't go in there. It's, it's suicide. That's my mood, exactly. But I've got to get those Adamses off the street or I'm sunk. Well, I'm not going in. That's the first intelligent thing you've said in the entire campaign. Get down with the polls and see what's going on. Right. <laughs> Bass. Boss? Call my mother and tell her not to wait up for me. Good idea. <laughs> We've been expecting you. I should think so. I'll take your hat. No, no, no I'm holding on to it this time. <laughs> Mrs. Adams. Oh, please, don't say it. I will, too, say it. Mr. Adams and I find expressions of gratitude so embarrassing. Expressions of gratitude? Your election will be our reward. I'm going to turn this whole thing over to a lawyer. A lawyer? Yes. My car. Gomez is responsible for putting more criminals behind bars than any other man in the United States. You, a prosecuting attorney? Attorney for the defense. <laughs> well, I don't need you for my lawyer, and I don't need you for my campaign manager. You see, our man's a politician of the old school. Not only forgets his campaign promises, he forgets his campaigners. Ah, <laughs> uh, I knew we backed the right horse. Excuse me. Thank you, thing. Adam's here. Oh, yes, he's here, too. It's for you. Probably your opponent, Quimby, conceding the election. Adams! Probably a case of election day jitter. I hope so. Why don't you answer it? You'll answer it. Of course, old boy. Adams here. I'll take the message. Oh, hello, Bass. Really? Some of the first returns are in. Oak Knowles, eh? Uh-huh. Good. I see. Good work, Bass. It's a landslide. For Hilliard? For Quimby, 76 to nothing. 
I knew it. I knew it. Oh, those early returns. Of course, the Oak Knoll section, upper class snobs, always contrary to the main trend. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> Thank you, Thing. Darling, you look a little tired. Why don't you just relax? <laughs> Hello, this is Mrs. Adams speaking. Yes, he's here. It's for you again. I'm not going near that thing. <laughs> I'll take the message. Oh, hello, Mr. Bass. Really? It's the ninth precinct. Oh, well, that's much better. Hilliard 6, Quimby 110. You see, you're beginning to gain. I'm ruined. <laughs> Oh, come now, Mr. Hilliard. That's the ninth precinct. Nothing but lower class people. That's not where your strength is. If that's for me, I don't want to talk to anybody. Adam's here. Bass, what's the word? Come now, Bass. You can think of another word. <laughs> I see. Well, the middle class section is the most important. Fine. All right, let me have it. If I were you, I'd demand a recount. Oh, no. Hilliard, five. Quimby, 204. Not bad, really. You only lost one vote. I'm sure there's been some fraud. Oh, yes. Bass admits it. Too bad they caught him. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Adams speaking. Oh, yes, Mr. Quimby. Mr. Hilliard's here. I'm afraid he can't come to the phone right now. What? Mr. Quimby, I'm sure you're mistaken. Electronic computers do not vote. <laughs> Mr. Quimby is claiming victory. Wonderful! What's wonderful about it? Can't you see, old man? The trap, the Achilles heel, the Waterloo of every politician, overconfidence! Uh, <laughs> oh, the poor dear. The sweet smell of success must have been too much for him. <laughs> So glad you joined the Zen Yoga Society, darling. Right, Karina. After a strenuous campaign, at least you can relax. Every man should learn to relax this way. <laughs> it's a wonderful gift. Oh, it says Mr. Hilliard is quitting politics. Really? Must be his health. Must be, because it says he's thinking of leaving town, too. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it says he's thinking of leaving the country. I was so sure he'd win. I guess we got into the campaign too late. <laughs> Liz, I'm afraid we failed. Not according to Quimby. He says if it wasn't for us, he wouldn't have won. What a generous thing to say. Why, thank you, Thing. <laughs> Maybe we should have gotten Thing into the campaign. No, I guess not. <laughs> hello. This is Mrs. Adams speaking. Why, well, hello, Mr. Hilliard. Really? Isn't that nice? Well, thank you. Goodbye. That was that nice Mr. Hilliard. He says he's glad he lost. The mayor appointed him head of the school board. It's a much better position. In that case, I'm proud to have served. <laughs> Ali, oop, oop, aha! Where are you going, darling? To the playroom. To add Mr. Hilliard to our illustrious collection. <laughs>